the men's team just lost their, uh, I think the second match, the first one they lost to uh, the Kenya junior team and of course the second one they lost narrowly to Kitale, 32-33. Uh, I mean, uh, it's an exciting encounter of course now. Uh, to <laughs> I hear Laventa telling me that they lost to Kasarani. Okay. Of course now uh, the match ongoing is uh, between uh, Kenya 1 and Kenya 2. An exciting encounter, uh, perfect atmosphere to be here, sporting atmosphere. While Florence, when a book will be written in history about uh, the history of Okabadi in Kenya, uh, five pages or so will be preserved for one Laventa Oguta. Uh, she's the brain behind Kabadi in Kenya. Uh, she has done a lot. Um, we have Kabadi, uh, at least five players now are making millions in India where they're playing for pro uh, Kabaddi teams and of course I understand they even have a program with the US and uh, she's the brain behind everything. When you talk about Kabaddi, the success that Kabaddi has had so far, uh, having been able to field a team in the World Cup, it's all about Laventa Ogutu. Allow me to talk to Laventa and just have a quick uh, conversation about the state of uh, Kabaddi and what she's doing to make sure that Kabaddi uh, spread to as many parts as possible. First of all, Laventa Bana. You are a legend. Um, I'm Levent Oguta. Like you said, I'm, I'm the founder. One day I walked to YouTube and found this game. And I thought another Kenya can play the sport because I've been to many, many sports before. So now we have Kenyan playing the sport. Yeah. And interesting, you are playing rugby for KCB. And you are just searching for videos to I'm understand more for KCB. Okay. And Lioness. I play also for Kenya team. You played for Lioness and KCB. So you are on YouTube trying yeah, to yes. find more information we'll about rugby. Watch some, some rugby match of New Zealand and see the, that person playing my position, how they're playing. Yeah. So that as I went to watch, maybe someone, somebody else watched this game and left it there. So as I opened YouTube, this game came and I watched it. Mm -hmm. And I liked it. <laughs> so when I went back for training, I started warming up with my girls, telling them, Kabari, tell me you are growing mad. So I started just walking around Kenya, meeting any athlete, asking, why can't you play? Kabadi, they're saying, what is that? If I played football and it's not paying, I left playing football, why will that Kabadi help me? Yeah, and some thought and came back and they play. They play Kabadi. Now Kabadi is paying them. It's paying yeah. them millions, actually. Yeah. Let's talk about the first World Cup. Uh, you were able to come up with, uh, you just get players from Taekwondo, from yeah. rugby, different yeah. sports, yeah. and come and represent the country. How was the experience uh, having to fill the team that, not so experienced yeah. in Kabadi, yeah. but representing the country in the World Cup? You know, Kenya, we are naturally athletes. Yeah. We got the fitness, the physique, and at sea, our men's rugby is doing very good. Yeah. So in a contact sport, people really fear Kenya. So like I got many players from rugby, football, uh, to play. So what we were lacking was only skills because we were learning from YouTube. But for our first World Cup was a good experience to us that we learned a lot from the, from the, from the World Cup. Uh, being, it was our first appearance when we were number four. Means Kenya can do better. So, and we also just from the Master Tournament, tournament in Dubai and we also managed number four. So, and we went to Mauritius where we were playing Asian games. We were number three, we got a bronze medal. So there's a progress. So hopefully this uh, June we'll be traveling to Denmark for another, World Cup, uh, another um, master tournament before the World Cup in October. No, 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 the World Cup is in Malaysia, it's not, uh, the World Cup is in, in, in Denmark. Yeah, so, and we are hopeful that this time around the Kenyans are going to give a good uh, performance. Mm -hmm. If you see also our other clubs playing with the way they're playing Kabaddi, meaning there's progress. Because the national team is supposed to be selected from these clubs you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm impressed with them, some KU boys yeah. and Kitale. Even the KU girls are playing very good. In fact the KU girls have the right body and the height because here you have to be 75 years, 75 kgs and below. So they are, they are more agile and there's more talent. So we just need to invest in this team and maybe can you be the national team of Kenya? Yeah. Thank you. All this success, just Laventa. You are coaching all the national teams. From the, the last time I checked, you are training. Let's talk about the, uh, the development or fast forward from when you participated from the first World Cup. Has things changed? Has things changed since you participated in the first World Cup? Are we having improvements? Are you having infrastructures? Is the government coming in to help Kabadi? Actually, the government is coming in. As you can see, we have Mr. Farah here. We have a sports registrar here to watch the game. Uh, when we went to Dubai, the government supported. Uh, actually, even Sports Kenya, uh, they really support us with training facility. So we train like professionals, that we appreciate the government so much for the support they're giving. Uh, you know, the sport is new, and you cannot just come to somebody and tell you want to be supported if they have not seen how Kenya is going to benefit from the sport. But now, 
they, we are rooting for the sport in schools, universities, and soon we're going to do better. Like I've told, we have five players in professional league. We have three players in America right now. They are coaching universities. They are earning money, and we'll be having uh, exchange programs from Kenya universities to American university. That's an, uh, an achievement. So kabaddi is not just a sport. Yeah, it's going to offer scholarships. You can get money. If you talk to my professional players, they have history. They have their players who are from nothing to somebody like right now, like somebody like David. David in India cannot walk alone, he walks with bodyguard. Uh, Victor is uh, the one coaching KU, is a brother to Amos Nondi, the footballer. He was playing uh, football, a very good footballer, but I convinced him to do Kabadi Zuma. He's a, he's a football player. Yeah, now they're getting good money and they, uh, yeah, my players are driving because of Kabadi. And I'm grateful to God that God has, changed, has, has, has used me to change other people's life. Yeah. I know we have a lot to talk about Kabadi in Kenya and uh, what Laventa Oguta has done to make sure that the game Kabadi is Kabadi. The Kabadi we know now, it was a very uh, sport that not many people were interested to know about, but now people are gaining interest and I've seen different clubs, even the likes of Kitale. On the other side, I understand we have a Ugandan counterpart. Yeah, yeah. To talk about the situation in Uganda, is things changing. Quickly, before I let you go, I know you have a lot to do. How do you feel when you look at it and see that the success of Kabadi, uh, when people see you, they see the success of Kabadi in the country. They associate you with their sport. Uh, you know, when we were talking about history, 20 years to come or 15 years to come, we were saying that Kabadi was introduced in Kenya by Laventa Oguta. How do you feel? Uh, it's, it's, it's an honor. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a legacy that I want to leave behind. I want to leave a legacy. Like I played football, rugby and other sports. But this one, I really started this one from grassroots to something right now. So I'm happy that I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave this place when people still love me. I don't want to be here for long. I've uh, mentored my players to be coaches now. Uh, now soon they'll be leading themselves. So I want to leave this place when I, I want to leave a legacy. I don't want to leave when people associate me with stealing. So whatever I've done good will go to waste. Yeah. And Anna Laventa, all the best with everything, the organization. We wish you all the best with the national team and anything Kabadi. Thanks. Keep doing what you do. Asante Sana. Uh, Florence, that is, uh, that is uh, Laventa Oguta, the brain behind Kabadi in Kenya and all the development, everything, the success and everything. On this side, where I'm walking to is uh, Edgar. Yeah. Edgar, uh, another ardent fan and a lover of Kabadi. Uh, he's the Secretary General of Kabadi in uh, the, K the Federation, Kabaddi the Kabadi Federation, Federation of Uganda. Of Uganda. Yes. First of all, quick one. Uh, welcome to Kenya, first of all. Uh, it's a very beautiful country, you know that. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, it is, it is really a beautiful country. Yeah, but a little hot. Yeah. Than Uganda. Uh, than Uganda. Uganda is uh, like uh, ever a cool country. Rain is always there, sunshine is always there. So we keep on pushing. Yeah. I <laughs> well, the update from, uh, can we just face this side? Okay, this will be better. We just have a view of what is happening on the, on the background. No, uh, no, you'll just face this side, Edgar. <laughs> Let, we want the people to have the perfect so, view. So, so. Um, Edgar, let's talk about the situation, the Kabadi situation in Uganda. Is it similar to Kenya? Are we steps ahead of you? Are you step ahead of us? Just paint a picture of the situation of the Kabadi, the levels of Kabadi in Uganda. First of all, Kabadi in Africa started the proper, I think, in, in Kenya. It's Kenya who almost is a kick started a number of things in Uganda. Because when, when I, I individually started the Kabadi in Uganda, I invited the Kenyan team to come at least and, and have that international view of Kabadi. So that means that Uganda is generally a little bit down to what? To, to Kenya. Exactly, exactly. But now in terms of structure development, here things are different because of a number of things, a number of factors. You look at how the government run its activities, specifically in the sports, in the sports fraternity, in the sports sector. Uh, I think very many things differ between how Uganda run its sports sector and Kenyan sector. Also the nature of players, the nature of environment that we are having. That also does what? Brings a difference between the Kabadi in Kenya and Uganda. Yeah. Quick one, by the way, you're talking about the situation in Uganda and 
and something uh, runs in my mind that we have a lot of similarity ones. And we are not just neighbors, yeah. but you look at the visibility and physicality of some of the players, not just in, in Kabaddi, but even in rugby. Yeah, we yeah. have a lot in common with Uganda. But let's talk about uh, uh, we having uh, Kenya. The reason Kenya is doing well is because we are having uh, even our government and different institutions able to support the game. Infrastructure-wise, how is Uganda in terms of Kabaddi infrastructure Kabaddi development. Okay, like like I said, Uganda we are developing. We st uh, we started Kabaddi in 2017. Yeah. We are two years old in Kabaddi, but having strategic plan and operational plans. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, currently, see, when you look at Kabaddi, you look at uh, at the mat, yeah. at the Kabaddi mat. First of all, if you want to have a, a pro, a better and a professional, well played Kabaddi mm -hmm. in place. So, first of all, we have the arena, which was granted by the government of Uganda, Kabaddi Federation of Uganda, to use the facility. Then I thank my government for that. So, two, we are also, as a federation, having uh, an operation work plan of five years to have a Kabaddi arena, which we, have, we, have, we already have acquired land for the federation, where this uh, Kabaddi arena will be done what? Will be developed. Yeah, structure-wise, that's where we are. And currently, as Uganda, we don't have a mat. But we are looking for all ways, at least even if we find a provisional mat, which we can use, which we can beautify and modify, the better for us. Because we, we, as Ugandans, we, we, Kabaddi is not just a game. Kabaddi is a profession. Uh, yes, however much now, currently, however much you are two years old, some players, some coaches are earning already from Kabaddi, which makes it professional. Exactly. Nice conversation. I see your federation, you're having a lot of plans to make Kabaddi better and make sure that maybe the standards, maybe you can be able to uh, be, uh, maybe the East African region can be able to be the powerhouse of Kabaddi exactly. in Africa. Because again, if you look at Rwanda, Burundi, uh, Tanzania, they're having Kabaddi. Rwanda, I understand they have Kabaddi. Burundi, they have Kabaddi. Uh, and of course, Kenya and Uganda. It's mean that it's an East Africa affair exactly. in Africa. We are dominating. But let's talk about the competition now, the East Africa Women Championship. Yes. How is the team faring? Yeah, first of all, before... I talk about my team, I will first have to thank the government of Uganda, I'll have to thank the government of Kenya, I'll have to thank IKF, I'll have to thank the Kabaddi Kenyan Union, also and Kabaddi Federation of Uganda, for at least managing to come up with such an event. So when I go to the event, uh, really it is a, a struggle to develop women in Kabaddi around the world, around the world. It's when people are coming up to begin developing women in Kabaddi. But in Uganda, Kabaddi women development, we put it really, it is one of the crucial, sensitive area that we have tackled. From the grassroots, however, we develop men and women equally. Activities, we equally, we equally organize them. Exactly, in, in Kabaddi, in terms of gender. Because when you, when you look at uh, school development, we have involved each and you see that uh, the girls' team, the she gladiators. The she, gladiat uh, the she gladiators are composed of uh, the biggest percentage. We have got them from the institutions, mostly secondary schools, high schools. Because we are, develop we are looking at uh, a project of 10 years project uh, for the she gladiators. That it is, today, the ladies who are playing, the she gladiators of today, we want to see them at least lifting, in the 10 years, lifting a trophy in the Women's Kabaddi Championship in the World Cup. Yeah. So it was a good benchmark to start with the East African Women's Kabaddi Championship, which I think we are, we are also benchmarking some other practitions, pra, practitions yeah. which we can also Im, Im, implement in our team. Now, coming to the championship, to the championship, it is well organized. I would like to thank Madame Laventa for the effort she has done, even for inviting Uganda. Who are we to be invited in this championship? However much you travel the long distance, what, what, it's, it's our love. We love Kabaddi. It's their profession now. As uh, we are looking at uh, taking back the trophy back home, when we are being flagged off by the government of Uganda and the National Council of Sports, uh, we really had a press conference and we... 
we told our Ugandan fans, our members, our partners, different stakeholders of Kabadi that we want to raise our flag high and bring, and bring the cup home. And we just needed their prayers. But so far, so good. Yeah. Edgar, I tell you, Edgar Mujuni, this is Mujuni. Yes. Mujuni. Yes. I'm telling you, when a book will be written about the history of Kabadi in East Africa, yeah. pages will be preserved just for you in Laventa. You're doing good work. Congrats for being able to participate in the competition. Hopefully, we can see a formidable side from East Africa yeah. dominating Kabadi, not just in Africa, but I even think. worldwide. Uh, Sunday, Sunday, and Meshkuru, Sana. Uh, well, Florence. Edgar Mujuni is Secretary General of uh, the, uh, Fed, the Kabadi Federation of Uganda, talking about uh, some of the plans they are having in terms of making sure that Kabadi uh, is a, make, sh make sure that uh, Kabadi grows, and of course they have as many institutions and different teams participating in the Kabadi in a different championship. I'm looking for someone uh, who I think is better placed to talk about the situation in terms of. Uh, uh, the conversation, I see him uh, in terms of talking the conversation in terms of how university and different institutions are taking up the game. Because again, you understand in Kenya, uh, institutions, whether it's learning institutions, government institutions, they play a very big uh, role in terms of development of sports. Vitalis Ojukwa represents Kenyatta University, which is one of the universities that are taking the sports. And uh, commendable for Kenyatta University, we are taking a lot of sports, new sports, and performing well. First of all, let's talk about uh, how the team is faring in terms of uh, the develop development of Kabadi in university. You are the coordinator for Kabadi, Kabadi University Coordinator. How is the game faring in university and different learning institutions? Now, I would say that uh, universities are doing well. Now that uh, Kenyatta University is already here, we know that other universities are, are going to come on board. You know, it's one thing to come and it's one thing to make others come. So as Kenyatta University is known to be a home of uh, sporting excellence, so we know that other universities are coming and we are calling them to come. So that uh, at that level, transition from the university to the community national teams will be smooth. Yeah. So how would you describe the state of, uh, I know you are talking about institution coming up, yeah. Kenyatta University being the first one, but how would you describe the state of Kab Kenyan Kabadi in university? Now, I would say that uh, actually the Federation of Kabadi had not reached the universities. So I can't blame the universities for not having the knowledge or the know-how of this game. But now that they have decided to come to the universities, I know that universities are a place that uh, we take everything serious. And I know most of the universities in Kenya are going to pick up this and are going to run away with it and actually make what is uh, deserved out of it. Yeah. Quick one. I know it's infrastructure wise, not just in universities, but even nationally, we are having challenges. Uh, the tournament itself had to be postponed by one day because of infrastructure, the facility. Let's talk about Kenyatta University. We are having a team that is performing very well, uh, but uh, having been the representative of universities, uh, maybe is there something that we are doing to make sure that uh, we have Kabadi infrastructures in different institutions? In Kenyatta University, already what I've seen here, this being an, an international uh, championship, already the facilities I've seen here, they are already existing in Kenyatta University. We have the gym that has everything. We have a martial uh, arts hall that has all that is being used here. That's why you would see that Kenyatta University is our first time to come to this championship, but you can see what we are doing. It's because they have all the facilities of what was required. Yeah. So as we were preparing them to come here, yeah. we were doing it from the right uh, step. Uh -huh. Our first step was for, on the right note. Okay. And I'm telling you, Kenyatta University has not only come to see what to do at, back at home, but what we have back at home is already what is used at international championships like this one here. And for your information, just imagine Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Tanzania are here, and Kenyatta University is also here as one of the East Africa, the East Africa University that has come as a house on its own. Yeah, loving that, the only university yeah. in East Africa. Yeah. A lot of people actually, you're talking about Kenyatta University and being one of the universities that has taken the sports and it's performing very well in this championship. Yes. I've talked to a few guys, a lot of people are talking about the women team, the Kenyatta University women team, their performance, uh, they're even giving the national team a run for their money. People are even talking about how most of these players, young players from Kenyatta University, can be incorporated in the national team. 
Vitalis, how do you feel when your team is performing so well? Now, and let, some... <laughs> let me tell you, the first national team of men that went to Dubai, among the men, four of them were from Kenyatta University. So now this being a champion that is now bringing ladies on board, I'm sure that our ladies are also out to get that ticket in the first national team of ladies that will be going out. That's why you have seen that serious game that they have given Kenya one team, raiding them to the ground and being their first time. So I'm telling you that the team to watch in Kabadi is Kenyatta University ladies team. Because they are coming and they are coming for it. We don't care who was there first, we will come and overtake and turn, turn around the tables. We don't care who was there, uh, we'll come and overtake. I'm okay. loving that, Vitalis Ojuko. Asante sana for your time Thank and all the best with Kenyatta University. Yeah. Well, uh, good one from Vitalis Ojuku talking about how Kenyatta University will be the next force to reckon in, in, in terms of uh, Kabadi, not just in university, but even nationally. Again, Kenyatta University has been a sports hub. Uh, you have been there, Florence, you know better that in terms of taking up new sports and performing or uh, excelling in some of these sports, uh, Kenyatta University has been uh, doing so in a lot of them, the likes of floorball and roadball, uh, which again is an interesting conversation to see even the Kabaddi team performing exemplarily in, in, um, in the women in an East Africa Women Championship and being the only university site from East Africa uh, to, to participate uh, as an own entity. Again, that is a conversation for now, Florence, but once we have anything uh, from the Kasarani Indoor Arena, we'll be making sure that we feed you with the best Kabaddi conversation that we can. Back to you, Florence, in studio.